So you want to sell products on Amazon, but you don't know what to sell. Now, one route you can go is selling products that you buy uh, from China, brand yourself and sell them. But another route you might have heard of is Amazon wholesale or reselling brand name products. And in order to do that, there are some key things you're going to need to set up as a business in order to actually be taken seriously when you actually go to talk to brands or distributors to resell their products online. Now, it's extremely important important to be professional when you're approaching brands at the start okay or when you're approaching distributors oftentimes they're getting calls all day long from other Amazon sellers or from other buyers like retail stores and things like that and they don't have a lot of time so they don't really want to waste time talking to somebody who isn't properly set up and we're gonna get into that so if you want to know why I'm making this I have a client that asked me a lot of these questions and instead of billing and running up their hours and charging them hundreds of dollars to answer these questions i made this video for them and for you so i hope this video helps out my clients who uh, might have these questions and i hope it really helps you out as a viewer We are talking to somebody like you who wants to start selling on Amazon, who's never sold on Amazon, or maybe you're just doing retail or online arbitrage, uh, or you're selling books and you really want to get into brand name products. So the first thing that you're going to really need to set up is a business structure. So that might be an LLC, which I, I would recommend, but you're gonna wanna talk to a lawyer or an accountant to really make sure the, the structure is right for you. It can be an S corporation, what have you, but you need to set up a legitimate business structure. And usually it's free to set this up or a hundred or $200 in your state. It's really a low cost thing to do and it's absolutely necessary. You do not wanna be calling brands or distributors and trying to buy things under your personal name. It's just not gonna work, guys. So definitely you're gonna need to do that. Secondarily, after you set up your business and your tax ID number, I forgot to mention that, you need a tax ID number. And you can get that easily from the federal government and that is free too. So go check that out. These things, just Google, all right? If you have a question on where to find it, leave a comment below. But you need a tax ID number because the next thing they're gonna ask you when you're setting up your wholesale account is what's your tax ID number? And you're gonna need it. You're not gonna wanna be scrambling, all right? Then the next thing, okay, is a reseller or tax certificate from your state. Distributors and uh, brands cannot sell without charging sales tax unless you have this. And typically this is free too, although you continually have to file reports to your state once you get it, otherwise you'll get fined. Initially it's free and then the hassle of filing the paperwork every three months or, or whatever the interval your state requires by law, you will want a reseller certificate and you will absolutely need it otherwise the brand or distributor will not set up an account for you so you'll be dead on arrival with that so you're gonna need all that that's like the bare minimum the next thing you will likely need is a business checking account so once you get all the other stuff set up Go to a couple banks in your town or go to their websites now and check to see who has the best deal for business banking. I don't, I don't pay a fee for my business banking. I don't think you should. So just call around. You do not want a high fee, high cost business checking account. Just get one. You need it. Um, you, you're going to need it one for being serious as a business account, writing checks to vendors with your business name on the check all that awesome stuff but also it's great for managing your tax liability and keeping your business transactions where they should be in the business checking on the business credit card and your personal transactions where they should be in the personal account on the personal credit cards you really want to segregate that stuff to keep it professional and to make it easier at the end of the year because when you do this your business is going to expand so quickly that when it's time to do taxes, you're gonna really wish you had everything segregated because it's gonna be an absolute mess if you don't actually set things up properly when you get going, okay? 
So now, when you are talking to the distributors, you likely are probably gonna wanna have some infrastructure set up. So some, some Amazon sellers operate out of their garage and all that good stuff, and they even get pallets delivered to their house somehow and things like that. But when I started on Amazon, I got a small warehouse to begin with. And as I grew, I got a bigger and bigger warehouse. And that made things a lot easier to say to brand owners or distributors that here's my business location. Oftentimes some distributors will Google map your address and make sure it's a warehouse and make sure that they're delivering to a warehouse, not a, re a residential neighborhood. So you really will want to look into getting some sort of warehouse. You can also go the route of a prep center or a 3PL, third party logistics provider. And if you can set up a deal with them, uh, you can have your pallets delivered directly to them and prep so you don't have to do any of the dirty work. All right, so that's interesting stuff right there. So now you have your business structure set up. You have your warehouse. Now you're contacting brands. How do you contact brands? Well, you you know you really want to make sure you're either buying directly from a brand, but directly from the manufacturer, or you want to make sure you're buying from an authorized distributor. Because what could happen is if you're buying from um, just Joe Schmo Warehouse Distributors LLC, you know maybe they're selling selling you counterfeit good you know you really need to make sure you're buying from legitimate sources now I sell a lot of imported brand name items and I can easily confirm the company that is importing it is actually has the supply chain map because you can go to online databases of importers and you can trace okay XYZ distributor in New York City bought this brand from India and there's an import record okay so there's a lot of records basically proving that they got the supply from this other brand but uh, you'll want to make sure that you're buying from an authorized distributor you should ask them if they're an authorized distributor of that product now that you're confirming your supply chain making sure you're not selling counterfeits and things like that what you're gonna want to do is make sure you can before you place your order with your distributor or brand owner make sure you can sell that product on Amazon and Amazon doesn't always let you sell everything you can buy you cannot always resell what you buy if you happen to have a, a deal with Nike it still may be hard for you to get authorization on Amazon to sell that brand and it happens with several brands where or nutritional supplements if you're a new seller you might not be able to sell nutritional supplements so now if you bought five thousand dollars of nutritional supplements from a distributor and you can no longer you cannot even list them and sell them you have now five thousand dollars of product that you're sitting on that's going to expire at some point in time and you're going to have some problems that happened to me when i first started selling on amazon i was really sick to my stomach because i had nutritional supplements but then i also had uh, topical right like moisturizer and I couldn't sell either so I had four thousand dollars of stuff I couldn't sell and I was panicking so this was at the beginning of my journey and I was like what am I doing you know so you can easily in seller central confirm that you can sell that product before you even list it even even on a simple thing like a food item I recently in the last two years there was a food item that Amazon wasn't allowing any new sellers on. It was so weird. I had never seen anything like that. And I had a whole pallet of it, a whole pallet of that stuff. And that was a bad buy, you know? So this is something that you need to confirm before you place an order. Another, another way to protect yourself is to only buy a small amount initially. Maybe you're caught off on your initial products is a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars no matter how great how juicy the profits look you're only going to order fifteen hundred dollars worth because you are now going to create that shipping plan to ship to amazon fba and if something occurs where you have a problem okay you aren't going to take as much of a hit perhaps the distributor will take the product back although i wouldn't want to get into that situation where I'm returning products to distributors or manufacturers. It just does not look good. All right, so make sure you can resell the product. Make sure that when you're shipping to Amazon that logistically it makes sense. You know, if the product's fragile or too big, the cost to ship to Amazon could be high. So let's get into that. You know, that's probably in a different episode because, you know, that's talking about how to determine profitability. And that really gets into 
all the layers of into Amazon and and then Amazon FBA costs and things like that. That's another episode. So if you'd like to see that, let me know. So we got the business set up. We got the warehouse. You confirm your products are sellable on Amazon. So you're pretty much almost all the way there. Honestly, I think you're all the way there. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that you are managing your cash flow, that you have good payment terms. When when you first contact a supplier, they're likely not gonna give you payment terms, but maybe after two, three, or four orders with them, you can start asking for net 30, okay? And net 30 means that from the invoice day, you have 30 days to make that payment, and that's gonna be very, very helpful. So uh, the longer terms you can get, the better you can start managing your cash flow. The one last thing I did want to talk about is because we also distribute products uh, to other stores and resellers and things like that. And sometimes I see uh, like a Hotmail or Gmail address from a buyer and it really does not show that the person's serious. So you are going to need to set up a website with your company as the domain. So you're going to buy the domain once you decide the company name. You're gonna need to set up a domain and an email address like info at yourcompany.com. This is extremely important, guys. It shows you're really in it to win it, that you are structured as a business, you're formal, you're professional, and these are all the things that you need to launch a business that is going to resell products either on Amazon, on your website, or even if you're gonna sell products at retail. These are the things you need. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you had any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, straightforward questions, I will try to answer them. And if you are interested in a call, head over to my website at enablingecom.com and there is an ability to book me for a call if you want to discuss any of the things I talked about or anything about product launch or anything else that's on your mind about Amazon FBA. So thanks for joining me. I will see you guys next time.